it's so hot. I'm angry. Ah, oh, it's stupid. I hate this. Hi friends, welcome back, or to the channel. Jesse, this is uh, Cadillac Run Customs. It, it's hot enough that I take it as like a, like a personal assault. It's so unfair, you know what I mean? It's, and I know it's hotter in other places of the country, but I'm, I don't live in other parts of the country. It's, it's hot here, it's ridiculous. So, there we go. That's my good er side. Anyway, uh, it's hot. I had to drive the wagon into town yesterday, and it doesn't have AC. And it made me realize that I got to change my ways because I'm not cut out for hell. But also, I put a new AC compressor in the hearse about a month and a half ago, and. When she came home from work the other day, she reminded me that the air conditioner does not work. So, when I went out to, I went down to the Harbor Freight and I bought some gauges and stuff. Because I was just like, ah, you know, the, the little stuff that comes in a can with the gauge on top. Maybe that shit didn't work. So, I figured I would buy some gauges and actually do it the right way, you know. And when I popped the hood, I realized that there was a major problem. And... I want to take you guys along for the journey, but in order to do that, I have to get it under the cover because we're empty and it is clear out there. So I have to move two vehicles, pull that thing in. I got to move that because I don't want to knock that over again. I've already knocked it over once and I just got it like two years ago. So. Don't want to do that again. So I'm going to move that in my jack stands because they're tall enough that the the bumper will make contact and it, it, it's a thing. I don't want to do it. But I'm leaving the jacks there because that's kind of like, that's my backup alarm when I hit those and I hear the handles go down. That's when it's time to stop. So I'm going to get these moved and get that thing pulled over here and then we'll come back. Also, I don't know how well you can pick it up, but this thing is absolutely filthy. It's uh, chrome, don't chrome. That's ridiculous. And see how bad the hood looks. I think the front end of this car has been replaced because if you look at the paint difference between here and there, I think this has been replaced. And they did a shit job on this hood. And I buffed it once when she first bought it because it looked even worse than it does now but I did not use the right attachment apparently for my buffer so it only lasted I don't know how long she's had this car it's lasted that long uh, so I'm gonna do it again I'm gonna buff it while it's under here but I gotta wash it and stuff first and it's it's ridiculously dirty so yeah, we're going to fix that. But, this is not the color that your air compressor is, or your air conditioning compressor is supposed to be. And this is white. Sorry, got a magnet on the base of my tripod. I forget about it all the time. Anyway, look at that. It looks like that bearing said, I froze up. I don't feel good. And that clutch is completely... Oh, it does move. Hear it? It's crunchy. I don't know how... I mean, she, she got lucky by not having this thing on fire. Because the color of that metal, that thing has been hot. So, I have a new warranted out one. Uh, I'm going to let this cool off for a minute because it's been sitting outside. And this black is incredibly hot to touch, so... Okay, it's uh, kind of cooled off. So we're going to start by unplugging the pressure sensor and the clutch switch. And then uh, I'm going to take, actually I'm going to leave these caps on. I'm going to take this one off just so I don't lose it. But then there's one bolt right here. 
Once I get these two unplugged and I'm going to pull the pressure sensor out, I'll be back. To pull the sensor out, down inside there is a little snap ring here. See the little ears in there? That's it. You just pull that snap ring and the sensor pulls right out. So I'm going to get these two things pulled here, these, and get started loosening this bolt and then I'll come back. So in order to get this pump out, this bolt right here is a 15. Hello. Welcome back. What's on your face? <clears throat> so we were playing in the water at Chicago's house and yeah. Okay, so that doesn't explain what's on your face. Why does your face look like it's all muddy? Dirt. Dirt? Yeah. Okay. Like, we put the hose inside the hole that... Okay switch pressure switch now this one here is a 15 millimeter you have to take this bracket off I don't know if, if your Cadillac is the same as this one but this bracket has to come off and these are this is a 14 and that's a 13 there yeah have you had one today nope. no okay doesn't let her let me have her oh yeah I forgot then this one's a 15 and it goes down to the exhaust manifold down there and then there's just one nut right there. So before all of this though, I have to take the tensioner loose and pull the belt off and then, you know. Inside my tensioner is a 15 millimeter as well. Just, all these tensioners are spring loaded, that's what keeps your belt from flapping around on you. So just pull it. Walk your belt, and that's all. Reset it. Try not to Love take you. your belt all the way off. Set your watch. I do. Okay. Love you. Love you. Belt's off. Pressure switches off, or clutch switch. Yada yada yada. Now I'm gonna start doing everything back here. Okay, I'm not sure how well I'm going to be able to capture all this being as I'm standing right here and my camera's right there, but we're going to try it anyway. Not that size. That's the money right there. Now this system is completely evacuated because you can tell that from my missing pressure switch right here. There's no Freon in the system. It's completely discharged. It was done right-ish, you know. If I lean on that ish a little bit. I'm sure, you know, most of these braces are not necessary, but Cadillac has always been known for over-engineering their bracing. I mean, like that. This is a solid rod. This is not tube, this is not pipe, this is a solid rod that they smashed down and drilled holes in. It's just an AC compressor brace, dude. But that's Cadillac. They're all, they've always been known for overkill. But, you know what they say, overkill is underrated. I need the extension. That's what you grabbed it for, dude. Anybody else's kids going stir crazy in the summertime? Also, be careful when you're removing that that nut down there because it's an exhaust nut, and through the heating and cooling cycles over the years, they get a little cranky. So be very careful because I've done it a few times where I've actually backed the the whole stud out of the head, or I've broke them off. So. If, if you're backing it off and it starts to feel pressure, stop, thread it back in, spray a little bit of your lube of choice on there, let it sit for a few minutes and back it out again. And if it's, you know, it might take a few cycles of in and back out again, but take your time. Or you could just grab a little torch and heat the, the nut up and back it out. But then you burn your fingers if you're dumb like me and grab a hold of it to take it off. So I prefer to just be patient and put the lube on them 
because I've lost my fingerprints more times than I care to admit. So, okay. I told you guys about <clears throat> this one here and that one right there. <coughs> but there is a sneaky boy right there, clear down at the bottom. And you can tell it's hiding behind these two fuel lines. So there's a bolt right there. Here, get this wiring out of the way. So yeah, that little guy right there. I have to take that off to take the clamp off so I can move the fuel lines just enough. Oh, and that one there. I have to loosen that one up too so I can lift the fuel lines up a little bit to get that bolt to come out. Okay. I was going to film taking all the, the clamps off in that bottom bolt, but it's a good thing I didn't because I had music playing and there was a lot of swear words that come out because it's kind of a pain to get back down in there. So, now that all the bolts are out, you just... Withdraw it. Stand up. There you go. Listen. That's not good. Uh, sounds like we had a sudden, unexpected, rapid disassembly of a bearing inside there. So this is why I buy with a warranty. Uh, now, now. We have a new one. Just got to confirm that they're the same. I'm sure they are. Just, you know, based on the number of them or whatever. Because this one's 57395. Or, sorry, 935. 57935. Same, same. So I gotta pop this bolt out. And that cover and put them back in here that this and then I'll drop this back in place I decided that I'm just going to change the fittings and everything once it's in place because once I have the bolts and everything tightened up it's going to be a lot easier for me to get to that snap ring and this one on the back where did I put that oh right there and this is the bolt that comes out of the very bottom down here on the back. And you have to kind of snake it through all kinds of stuff on this side to get it down in there. Just go in your hole. Okay. Good thing I have these Burger King hands because this job would be a lot worse if I had big man fingers. Oh, it's in. Oh my god, it's in. Pretty sure it started. Well, let's give her a few tweaks and see what happens. Man, it's hot. Even in the shade, I'm sweating. This is stupid. Hey. I think I might be winning. It certainly feels like it anyway. Doesn't feel like it's cross-threaded, so that's a bonus, right? I should be smart and go grab a ratchet wrench, but I'm going to. No. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but don't ever put your bolts in. Like I just started that one bolt. Don't ever tighten your stuff all the way down until you get all of your hardware attached because I've had to tear stuff back apart more times than I want to talk about because I put one bolt in and tightened it and then I couldn't get the rest of them started, you know? So, now that I have all of my bolts in there started, well, kind of snugged, now I'll go ahead and tighten up this very bottom one. That's the wrong size bolt, stupid. That one. Now, pull your tensioner all the way back down. This is where it gets uh, kind of tricky because it likes to pull itself off of other pulleys when you're pulling it around. So be careful when you go to slide it back into place. I mean, realistically, as long as it's... Uh, As long as it's lined up on all the teeth pulleys, like that one there, your horn balancer has teeth on it, 
these smooth face ones, it doesn't have to be exactly in the groove because once you start cranking the motor, it'll pull itself right to the center where it's supposed to be. That's fine. Don't worry about that. Anyway, now I have to reinstall that brace and this brace here. I'll put this line in place. Then I have to go try to find some oil and... I'm not going to take you guys with me because a lot of the guys here in town get kind of weird about being on camera, so... <laughs> okay, psych. I was just kidding. I still have to tighten this bolt and put that one back in because it's... Um, if you guys are doing this, uh, make sure you pay attention to these little washers. I know mine are new because, like I said, I just put this pump in a month ago. So these ones are in good shape, but the ones that come out of the old pump were not... And there's an O-ring inside this Voss right here. Make sure it's in good shape. And uh, when you're putting stuff in an O-ring, take a little bit of oil on your finger and just dab it around the O-ring so it doesn't roll over when you put your part in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to pour it in through the pressure switch. That was stupid. Because the only two holes in the pressure switch is like a little bowl down there. And there's two little tiny holes up here at the very top end of the bowl. So all I did was filled that thing full of fluid and then dumped it out. So I ended up taking the lines apart and, f and made a little funnel out of a soda box. And just dumped it right in the back of that line right there. Now, we get to charge it. And I just bought the stuff. There we go. I just barely bought the stuff. And never done this before, so got my pump here hooked up to the center of my gauges. Gauges high and low side. Now, when you do this, it's literally impossible to put these in the wrong place. You see how big that is. Here, let's, let's hold it next to each other. They're two different sizes, so it's literally impossible to put these in the wrong place. So, get this out of the way. Probably shouldn't have it there. Just like that. Now that this is all hooked up, Get these connected and then go ahead and open these all the way up. They say you don't need to open them all the way up, but I do, you know. Until they stop and then I back them out about a half a turn. Now, turn this on. So it's quiet. Now open both of these up. You have a vacuum change tones. and let that pull for a little while until this gets down close to 30 inches. Just got that shut off. It did not get down to 30, but it got down to 20, 21 I'd say. So I'm just going to let it sit for 5 or 10 minutes and see uh, if it holds. Because if it holds, you have an airtight system and it will hold Freon. If it doesn't hold, then you have a leak. And that's, you're going to end up doing this again. So, like I said, we're going to let this sit for... Well, we got to close these. Because we're just losing vacuum here. Okay. Those are closed. It's setting dead on at 20. And I'm going to go inside. It is now 6.02. And I'm going to let it sit for 10 minutes. And then I'm going to come back out. And see if it's still sitting at 20. And if it is. Then we have to turn this on. And just let it run for about 30 minutes. And then we will know that the whole system is completely evacuated. And we'll go from there. It's been about 15 minutes. And we're still holding dead on at 20. So I'm going to go ahead and fire the pump back up and let it run for about a half hour should be fine then after that I will come back and we will 
start to charge the system. Well, it's been 40 minutes and it ain't moved. So I'm gonna go ahead and close both of these. And kill that. Now, the, that is off. These are holding the vacuum to the system, so now is the time for this stuff. But first, I have to get these out of the way, which they pretty much are. Turn this on. My temperature is at 60, so that means the AC is on. I'm going to put this from the compressor. That's fine. And uh, this, by the way, does not come with the gauge set. Take this. Put it right down on there. Attach the yellow hose. Put this down, and it's going to pierce the can. All the way. Okay. Just set that down. Set it down somewhere cool, not somewhere hot. I'm going to use the low side here, so turn this on. See that? You can see it in here. Start to move the material. Gauge okay, is fluctuating here. Rotate it a little bit. Because it has not kicked on yet. So we're just going to let it keep pulling. Until that compressor kicks on. Okay. Oh, buddy. Shit, I skipped a step. I was supposed to purge the line because there was a little bit of air trapped in the line. Which I was supposed to do, but I was in a hurry. And it's, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. It's still taking the Freon. It's just not taking as much. So, yeah, when you put the pin on first time, Vacuum pump. You're supposed to take this off. There's a Schrader valve in here. And you just purge it until the refrigerant comes back out. I didn't do that stuff. So that's fine. Just take it. This part takes a while. taking a while. You do not want to set this somewhere where it's hot because the, the temperature difference will cause that can to swell and, and it could blow up. But that's why I just had to sit down here on the bumper. And when this starts cooling low, just take it, rotate it a little bit. And you can see it in this in this center gauge right here. When it starts pulling refrigerant, you'll see it actually push through there and towards the low side. Still waiting for the clutch to kick on consistently. I'll probably have to change it to the second can before that though. Here, there should be a sticker underneath the hood of whatever vehicle you're charging. Like a factory uh, AC sticker, you know? And it will tell you R134A or whatever type of refrigerant you have it'll tell you uh, quantity you're supposed to put in there this one does not have that but uh, if it says like you know 15 ounces they recommend a scale to weigh that shit because these are 12 ounce cans and if you overcharge it then the pressure switch senses that it's overcharged and it doesn't uh, doesn't let the pump to kick on. 
damn thing. Anyway, um, I don't have one of those, but what I was instructed to do, once this is running consistently, I want this between 34 and 40. Anywhere in there, it should stay ice cold. I'm just waiting for it to take all the refrigerant out of this can. And I'll change it to the next one. And it feels like this can got out. So now, let's put this one. Disconnect the can. Yeah, that works. Put it in, pierce it. Put it back out. That's dead on. So I'm going to let that run for a minute. Go ahead and close this off. Let's have a feel. Oh, buddy. That's nice. Nice cold AC, buddy. I hate having a narrow driveway sometimes. All the time. Holding. We're going to go ahead and give it just a bit more. Let's go get her and see what she thinks. Well, that's pretty much going to do it, guys. Uh, AC charged, it's ice cold. Now I'm just buffing the hood. Kind of forgot to do an outro until... I realized I was running out of daylight to do an outro, but thank you for stopping by. Uh, hopefully you learned something. It's it's substantially easier than I thought it was going to be. So if I can do it, you guys can do it too. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because I do appreciate it and it does help. I, I need all the, the subs I can get. So I'm trying to get to that first thousand. Tell your friends, come on over. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrap it here so I can finish buffing this hood before I lose all my daylight. So, remember guys, your dreams don't work unless you do. So, go buy some tools and do something you've always been afraid of doing. Love you, bye.